Hey everyone, Joel Anser, and today I am in Cardiff, Cardiff, Wales, guys. Outside Ramones, Ramones, to do their Titan Breakfast Challenge. So guess what? This is where the fun stops and the seriousness starts. This is an undefeated breakfast challenge. This challenge has been undefeated for over eight years. There has been upwards of 100 attempts and nobody has been able to complete this. So for this challenge, which is Wales' biggest breakfast challenge, apparently according to them, the biggest breakfast challenge in the UK, here we are going to have one hour to complete, which is eight eggs, eight sausages, uh, I think it's like six bacon. I'm gonna get you the exact amounts here momentarily, but there's also pancakes, we have toast, we have a buttered bread, we have beans, we have tomatoes, tomatoes, we have mushrooms, we have coffee, you are supposed to have like a juice or I'm gonna see if they'll let me do a soda instead. Um, like there is so many items on this, there's probably someone forgetting. I know you have hash browns, black pudding, fried potatoes, the list goes on. This is like I said, a full, full, full English, full Welsh breakfast, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, like I said, undefeated. So let's head on in, let's have some fun, let's eat some food. Um, the meal is 35 pounds. It is free if you complete it and you get a picture on the Wall of Fame. So let's see if we can get the free meal, Wall of Fame, and become the first to defeat this undefeated giant Welsh slash full English breakfast challenge. Let's go eat. All right, everybody, so here we are with the breakfast. It looks absolutely massive, I do say so myself. So we have the eight eggs, we have the eight sausages, six black pudding, six hash browns, pound of mushrooms, pound of chips, french fries, fried potatoes, whatever you wanna call them, three pancakes, a cheese omelet, uh, four pieces of buttered to buttered bread, four pieces of toast, I already could have chose fried bread, um, eight bacon rashers or pieces of bacon, and also some beans and tomatoes here, guys. So there's lots of food. In addition, we did have to do the drinks. So instead of a uh, pint of orange juice, they allowed me to have two cans of Diet Coke instead, so I appreciate that. And then for the coffee and tea, I went with a coffee decaf technically, but it's there, I just can't show it, there you go. So we also have a cup of coffee, we got a wasp there. Um, so like we said guys, one hour to complete this challenge. This is the biggest Welsh, the biggest Welsh breakfast, the biggest English breakfast that I have found that I have seen. This is undefeated for over eight years. She said there is upwards between 50 and 100 attempts guys. Um, so that is definitely something we're gonna try to, do, uh, to change today. Um, the cost meal was 35 pound and uh, we get that back if we are able to complete it. So that's pretty much that. I'm excited, we'll get started here just momentarily. I'm definitely excited, I am ready to rock and roll. I know they're ready, they said they close in about 45 minutes so I better hurry up. So wish us luck, we do technically have an hour but we'll say 45 minutes for the sake of it. So how about we get started here? I'll probably start maybe with these mushrooms, I think that's a good place to start. I'm just gonna wait for my camera to get to a minute here, so 15 seconds. So yeah guys, like I said, fried mushrooms, all this stuff. I do have some ketchup if I need it. And uh, yeah guys, Welsh breakfast, I'm excited. I even got some, I'm gonna salt my eggs, like salt. All right guys, let's start right now. I'm gonna slice one. I'd love a coffee. Coffee? Is it American? Yeah. Fried mushrooms. What do you expect? I like mushrooms. And the tomatoes and beans are in here too. Tomatoes, I should say. Mushrooms are delicious. Get some of these eggs. I do love a soft yolk. And I could have scrambled, but I went with the fried, yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to Zoom. Today we are here taking on an absolutely massive 
and in fact they claim to be the biggest breakfast challenge in the united kingdom so i think that's like supposed to be the biggest challenge per number of items there was you know apparently 57 items or whatever which is absolutely insane but when it came to the actual size and weight of this this thing was surprisingly large like incredibly incredibly huge no one had even gotten halfway before let me know if you drink coffee in the morning you may hashtag morning or hashtag not I never drink it in the morning. In fact, I talked to a lot of different eaters from the United Kingdom and they all knew about this challenge and were all so deathly afraid of it that they were like they just hadn't tried it because it was so big, so monstrous, they thought they would all fail it. So when I had the opportunity to not only see some castles in Wales, but eat some breakfast, I was down. Very tasty. So much the wasp on it. I have a cheese almond here. I'm just cranking to that. I'm gonna try some of these beans and tomatoes. Tastes good. Thank you. That's another thing. Beans and tomatoes. Generally not something you see in North America. But I like them. Very cool. So whether you want to call this a Welsh breakfast or an English breakfast, everybody here has said it didn't matter, so I'll probably call it an English breakfast for the sake of it. Um, so for those who are not familiar, an English breakfast is essentially everything here. It's beans, tomatoes, um, eggs, it is bacon, it is sausages, it is black pudding, it is a buttered bread, generally fried bread and or toast. Um, hash browns, I guess, are newer additions. Let's move on probably some of these sausages. See what they're all about. Mm. Very, very rich sausage. And I love their bacon here. This is a bacon rasher, but a piece of bacon. It's like a whole loin versus just the belly. Then of course you have like mushrooms, you have your English breakfast uh, coffee or tea, like just all kinds of items. Tastes good. We're about three and a half minutes in. My first English breakfast. Although beans at breakfast are really uncommon for a lot of people, so let me know down below if you've ever had beans for breakfast before. And Welsh breakfast. So with the size of this challenge, I knew we were definitely going to have to get to it. In the lovely city of Cardiff. I think the price tag of 35 pounds for all this food was really quite reasonable. Um, that'd probably be, you know, approximately, let's say, 45 American or so, something like that. The bacon's really nice. Maybe make some sandwiches with them. But when each item almost weighed a pound each, you know, you, you do the math. It really adds up. So we have lots of bread. That's so there was a little bit of variation allowed in the challenge. You could choose how you want your eggs. You could choose if you wanted the toast or the uh, fried bread. Um, I went with toast. I went with fried eggs. Toast and buttered bread. Which turns out fried eggs are done differently in the United Kingdom than they are in North America. And if I would have known that, I probably would have went with scrambled eggs. Coffee went down the wrong way. <coughs> Drink coffee. Don't inhale it. Coffee done. You can do on these things here. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Excuse me. Love me. Thank you. Hash brown? At least at a couple of the places I went to, they actually more or less equivocally deep fry the eggs, um, whereas the eggs are actually cooked so they're submerged in hot oil rather than like being just cooked on a flat top. Again, I don't know if that's standard or just unique. Add some ketchup. But that was a way I've never seen done in North America, which was pretty unique. It is not Heinz ketchup. Let me know if you're a Heinz fan down below. We're about seven minutes in. Nonetheless, the eggs here were really, really good. In fact, the sausages were really, really good. The bacon was really, really good. And everything was actually tasting awesome. I don't eat breakfast foods that often, so I was really enjoying this mix. Give me some of these Diet Cokes. Last sausage. Last rasher. 
This was also going to be my second time having black pudding, so I would get a second thought, a second opinion to see what I thought of the black pudding this time. I only have black pudding. Definitely not something seen in North America commonly. The pancakes were also supposed to be vanilla pancakes, so that was going to be uh, something a little different. Um, but pretty much that's the majority of the information I think I have for you today. Uh, what I will ask of you... So black pudding. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially... Animal yeah. scraps. Yeah. Blood. And then oatmeal. And lard. is let me know if you like buttered bread. Butter and bread, oh my gosh, is actually such an amazing combination. So let me know down below if you like buttered bread. And usually either love it or hate it. I had it once before. I'll let you know what I think of it here in a second. All right, toast gone. Buttered bread. Four large pieces, double sided, and then the pancakes, and the pound of fries. I'll dip into the uh, hash browns now. And at that, let's see if we can complete the 57 items, the biggest breakfast in the United Kingdom, according to Ramones, and definitely, definitely the biggest breakfast challenge in all of Wales. So with that, guys, let's get to it. Next, let's get in this black pudding. Look at it, guys. Let me know if you eat black pudding down below. Lard, blood, and oatmeal. Okay. This one's different than the one I had before. This one, I really taste the oatmeal in it. The other one I have have like cinnamon and cardamom in it. And you can see the oatmeal in it and why it's black. Because normally it's like red. Because the blood, the iron tree is black. I think we are 14 minutes or 13, 13 minutes in. Shout out to the staff, they've been super friendly. Very, very friendly. And because we can, let's try the black pudding and ketchup. Because why not? It doesn't add much. Now, last but not least, Fried potatoes, mm -hmm. chips. Can I buy you for uh, another Diet Coke, please? Diet Coke. Yes, thanks so much. And then the pancakes. I'll eat this last piece of buttered bread first. Shout out buttered bread. And then there was two. Now I'm definitely gonna utilize some of my favorite ketchup for these fried potatoes, chips, fries, whatever you wanna call them. Doing well. Oh my it's, it's, it's been good so You're far. First Don't jinx it. No, no. I'm Don't not jinx it. it. No, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Are you it. feeling full? Uh, I mean, I'm definitely not hungry at this point. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I said, shout out the staff. Her name's Claire. She's been fantastic. Well, Very friendly. Well, Probably about half done, guys. I think we're about 1740 in, if I'm not mistaken. Last of chips. Pancakes.
Let me know if you're Team Pancake or Team Waffle down below. I'm a Team Waffle. Me and Pancake said bad blood. And we are about to be 19 minutes in. Honestly, for a pancake, it's pretty good. I'll give him that. Last of the 57 items. Admittedly, they didn't count it. That's just what they said. And we are finished. I believe that was roughly 21.45. You guys saw the exact time on screen. Everybody, that was good. I had my first English breakfast. My first full English breakfast. I had my first Welsh breakfast. I had, well, my first actual breakfast challenge. Yeah, uh, in at least the main, uh, at least this part of the UK. Um, so that was awesome, guys. At least like in this style. So that was amazing. We did now defeat the undefeated challenge again. Over eight years, 50 to 100 attempts, no winners. Now we have one today, guys. So that was really nice. I did enjoy it, it was really cool that that spread. Like a huge thanks to all the staff here at Ramon's. Um, literally, I, I don't know if this is, is this downtown Cardiff, would you say? Yeah? There you go, downtown-ish Cardiff. It's very downtown-y. Um, but guys, it was really good. I got no complaints. So we do get our 35 pound back. I did have to pay in advance, 35 pound. And uh, that's about that. It was pretty good. I got no complaints. It definitely a lot of diversity. If I had to pick like some of my favorite items, uh, the uh, this sounds funny, but I really appreciated the butter bread. Just like I don't know, bread and butter is just a combination which just goes. And they used a real butter versus like a you know margarine or something. Uh, the eggs were good. The sausages were incredibly juicy. I really like the I like, well, I like the bacon rashers. The bacon they have over here I really like. I like how it's again a lot more like meaty rather than a fatty portion like we do in North America. Just like the belly, you know. Here it's an actual loin. So yeah, guys. But we had drinks, we had everything. So huge thanks to all the staff. Appreciate it, and uh, that's about it, everybody. Wales, thank you so much. And that now today, we've seen lots of castles. I'll show you one right now. Until next time, everybody, say happy healthy, hungry, happy eating. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, comment down below, and you thought it was challenging. Until next time, have a lovely day. Good morning, everybody, and yes, it is morning, not often. You know, do I say good morning? It's actually the morning. But guys, today we are just north of uh, Cardiff in Wales at a place called, I believe, I'm gonna try to pronounce this, I'll get the proper pronunciation, Cowerfilly, Cowerfilly Castle. Which is this thing right here, guys. This is a legit medieval castle. Apparently it was built in fear, like built by a gentleman in fear of the Prince of Wales at the time. I'm sure we'll get some history. They have basically a still active moat or partly active moat we got lots of swans in here it looks really cool it is massive it is absolutely giant this thing like you're driving up and you're like oh my gosh like it really is just a stone built fortress like it is a, it is honestly a marvel if they're even going to build something of this you know magnitude today it's nuts but especially you know back however many well 13 centuries so anyway let's head on in and see what this is all about there you go there's the, the spelling and this is the timeline built in 1268 destroyed by welsh prince built bigger and stronger the largest castle in wales leads defense against a six week siege hideout for a doomed english king that's interesting uh, leaning, uh, the famous leaning tower starts to lean. Coal millionaires restore the castle. That's pretty cool. So the largest castle in Wales, which Wales, if you're not familiar, is actually known for their castles. Like 
like that's what it's, it's known for the castle capital of the world because there's so many castles in such a small area if that makes sense like such a density of them wales is really a small country anyway it's kind of just on the if you look at a map it's on the left tip of the mainland united kingdom next to great britain so <laughs> this is super exciting i always love seeing castles we've got to see a couple over here let's see another one all right so walking in And there is a bit of a tour thing they said. They said basically just come on over and follow the green lines. No green arrows. Apparently there's arrows to direct you through here. We got a dragon's lair. I don't know if I can, it is like mapped. Let's see if I can uh, figure out where we are. So in the dragon's lair, we actually have dragons. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so according to the guide, which it is true, the, like, the, the first p impressive part they note was this multi-layer defense, which we just saw, like the uh, multiple uh, kind of moats, I guess you could say. This was the famous leaning tower. I guess this uh, became very famous, hence it was leaning. So we have some kind of gates. We have a diagram of the castle, its walls, and the establishment. And currently, we are in here. So there's a lot to it. And obviously with the multiple barriers of water, one way in, one way out. So we'll get a bit of an in-depth rundown of the history, and then we can just kind of do some of the sites. So Gilbert de Clare faced a tough challenge uh, besieging Kenilworth Castle. In, six, in 1266, it held out for six months, and English records surrounded on three sides by water could not be taken by force. Gilbert learned this lesson well. Water would surround his castle at Cacherfili completely. And that's how it's pronounced, Cacherfili. Cacherfili became the first concentric castle in Britain, built with two sets of walls, one inside the other, design inspired by new ideas coming back from the Crusades. Grand designs like Cacherfili Castle, didn't come cheap, but Gilbert de Clare had wealth and power to rival the King Earl of Gloucester, Lord of Glamorgan, sometimes Rebel Mach, Maher Lord, sometimes Alley of the King, um, various in battle, blah, 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 blah. There you go, you get it. And that's what it looked like. Interesting here, so they're talking about rebuilding the castle. So originally they thought it was Roman because of the size of its ruins, and it's only in 1834 did they realize that it was a late 13th century fortress. So kind of crazy to think about the history and the questioning that somehow now we have dating back to the 13th century when in the 1800s they thought it was Roman. Now, one of the siege weapons is a trebuchet, which basically throws you know big heavy objects, whether it be stones or dead bodies or carcasses into a castle. These are the actual stone missiles. I mean, that's a solid piece of rock. That would do some damage to anything. All right, this is cool. This is really where you get in it and you start to realize just how big, complex, and amazing this is. There's a little bit of wind. I'm really hoping it's not too windy because I always have to put in my external microphone. But guys, it, this is this is cool. I mean, like this behind me. This is that's what you want right there. I can say I've seen the castle in Wales prior to this, but similarly, this is absolutely impressive. And here's a big hall too. Crazy how big this is. I mean, obviously the roof has re been redone, but look at the stones. Look at all the stones in the walls. Only imagine, you know, the work that would go into something like this. So I know the lady said there was green arrows. To be honest, I haven't seen any green arrows, but just walking like in and out of these, like, like the stones, it just, the sheer magnitude and how thick these walls, like this is just an inside, ba like, you know, barrier or whatever. Well, look how thick this this wall is. That's my hand. Like how thick even just these inside structure walls are, let alone the outside structures. I am probably going to sh actually try to get on the arrows and then we can kind of look in this guidebook, which appreciate this guidebook. This is thick. This thing probably costs 10 pounds to, to, uh, to print. 
but here we go, here's, here's something else. Private, but still well connected. If you had the power and wealth to build one of the greatest fortresses in Britain, you didn't want to spend the days with the servants. So between 1277 and 1290, Gilbert de Clary built himself a set of richly decorated and expensively furnished apartments. The large windows and fireplace gave a hint to its splendor, a great castle spotting. But this wasn't a glor glorious isolation. His private rooms were connected to the Barros Gallery, Gilbert's own information superhighway, to the chapel for the highest level meanings, to the Constable Hall uh, for less spiritual matters, and for his private kitchen and more earthly sustenance. So, I imagine... Oh, look at this. There's a green arrow. Oh, okay. So we're in here on the other side. Now we're seeing it from a different angle. There's the big fire. Wow, okay, here, hold on. So now now I know what this is. Look at these. Okay, now I can appreciate how big these windows are. And this is a huge fireplace. This thing is probably, uh, I don't know, 12 feet across? And then... We kind of already saw just how big and grand this room is, but I definitely appreciate uh, having the little bit of the explanation for it. It definitely kind of helps bring it all into an actual uh, reality because there's just so much here. And like, like, look at this, guys. There's like every turn and corner I take, it's just. It feel like I'm in a movie. We went up some stairs into, here's like, I guess one of the, I don't know you call it, like a little tower room. Um, these are just little like sculpture things. They de uh, depict it, like they have, they call this the wife. They have the king, they have the lover, and they have the villain, which I mean, it's interesting, but there's, uh, according to the plaque, there's really no real history behind. And we have these stairwells. I will say compared to a lot of the other stairwells that we've seen, this is actually quite roomy. I mean, don't get me wrong, you still probably, you could like, you know, not really get two people comfortably walking by beside each other, but you actually could get two people walking, you know, kind of being mindful beside each other versus some of them definitely not. Here we are in one of the castle walls. This is cool. So we were down there and now we're up here. Okay, look at this, this is cool. So we obviously have a view of the outside of some of the, you know, the city over there, of the moat, which again, back in the day, there was really no effective uh, method of uh, attacking somebody through water. So if you had water on, you know, X side of a building, it was basically impenetrable, which, you know, again, obviously changed through time. But back in these eras, you know, I think, well, definitely 12th, 13th, 14th, 5th, and I probably, like, those centuries for sure, based on what we learned here today and the other castles that we saw all across the United Kingdom, that is definitely for sure. I don't know, uh, you know, a specific date when that changed, but pretty crazy. And then here, uh, this is a little cool outside. This is, I don't know, eh. I don't think this is the, this is not the leaning tower. This is some tower behind it. But if you'd still look down here, look, look, look at just the kind of cool like architecture and obviously the way they built these kind of peaks in the buildings. And then obviously this was, even you know, they have some stairs here. This was a tower of some sort at one point, obviously closed off right now. And down here we have more views outside. Again, just crazy how thick these walls are. And these are just inside walls. And then here we have the a, a beautiful view of the outside. You know, we have a nice hill up there. We have, which is now the town and the city center. Um, the leaning tower here, which is pretty cool. I mean, obviously it became very famous after the, uh, what was said, the English Civil War which is unique, obviously since de degrade it more. But over here, you know, again, it's kind of cool to see like, you know, multiple walls and just how vast the biggest castle in Wales is. And they are doing some construction on it here, unfortunately, but 
at the same time, fortunately, you know what I mean? I like the preservation. And here we have a latrine. So basically how this would work, you basically drop, you sit there, drop it down. And this one didn't look like it went outside the castle, so I don't really want to know where it went. But whoever cleaned that, I do not envy you. Here we have another room. They have some kind of gate going here. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to resemble like i uh, I'm not sure what it's supposed to resemble. But these are some cool rooms. I mean, these are just kind of up off that tower wall where we were. So it's not like, like there's the latrine, so it's you know on the wall, so it's not like that's a you know dungeon or anything. I think those would just be kind of rooms. And we'll head up some stairs. There's another arrow. See what this is. Ooh, wow, this is a big room. This is cool. And then yeah, it's kind of funny. This 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 would also give you an idea. Like often they or they probably didn't have glass like back in the day. So they probably either had sheep intestines, which are a little translucent. They actually resembled this. Like you see what that is, it's kind of, you get let some light in. Otherwise it'd be like animal hides or wide open. So you'd have a lot of uh, big fireplaces. You'd have be candle lit, torch lit. So castles were kind of cold and dark, you know? Although grand, at least in our minds today and, and back in the day. They have this plaque here pledged to three ladies. Um, one being the neglected first wife of Gilbert de Clare who basically was hung and they say her ghost haunts the castle known as the Green Lady. The second being the daughter Edward the First, who was the second wife of Gilbert de Clare who basically remarried um, a commonwealther but Edward turned out to you know actually like him and then the third being the daughter Gilbert and Joan um, who long story short held the castle under besiege during a Welsh uprising So right off the wall where we were is what they call the Horde, which is this here. And basically, you know, it gave, you know, a way for the soldiers to defend the castle. So whether it be, you know, shooting arrows, dropping stones on people as they tried to, you know, come to the actual wall itself. So that's pretty unique. This is more the, uh, they love the big building there. Uh, which we were just in and kind of walked all the way around and here they have one of the towers set up like it would have been in the 14th century and this is luxury stuff so you'd have you know a uh, ironclad which is basically a chest you'd have a noble seat which is a decorated chair you would have a what they call a powered nap which is a bed of ropes and or basically furs. You have a high table, no trouble, or at least that's how they're describing it, basically a long bench. You have faithful dogs, I guess, which are obviously not, well, not, or sorry. Yeah, here we go. A, a fire set of lightweight fire dogs. Okay, so that's what that's called, a fire dog. I was gonna say, I don't see any dogs. And then, um, stable table, little nightstand. Pretty interesting. Luxury, guys. But again, look how thick that wall is. Woo! Now we're at one of the top of the towers. So they have like the little, like, you know, kind of more arrow, narrow slits. Beautiful views of the countryside. And I mean, you can just see for each direction 
everywhere. You know, that's the one opening here. Still having, you know, a series of moats, you know, barriers. Again, still a sizable wall. Look, it's really holding the land. I mean, that's obviously a man-made moat. It's just amazing how beautiful this all is. It's kind of cool. We have a little <clears throat> call passageway here. Got a crouch out to, I guess, the first set of walls, we'll call it. Um, we'll head out here in just a moment. I want to make sure that we got... I don't think we went into this building on the base level. And here we have a vaulted room, which they said, although restored, was likely a private chapel. Which is pretty interesting. It connects to kind of the great big piece right here, which I believe are some of the quarters of the wealthy or the towers at least. And through this, we have obviously what would be a gate. Quite a bit of room, but still just beautiful and majestic. And we saw this just from right up there on that tower a minute ago, but geez, like, it's huge. Now we're on the other side, the bottom side, so this is the horde. Remember that's where the uh, soldiers would be defending from. Kind of a bit an outreach. There's that little door. We just came around the front there. And then we are inside the kind of first wall, the inner wall. Which this wall itself is uh, five, five, good five feet tall. I mean, you know, at almost six feet, I can kind of barely, yeah, I can see over it a bit, but nothing too crazy. And just that is a, it's a pretty significant body of water. I mean, you see why I protect things, and then the size of those walls is just monumentous. So even if you made it into the water, so you have these stone walls all around it, and obviously a lot higher one for this, because we're elevated. Crazy. So every castle I've seen has been a marvel. But one thing that I'm noticing about this one, which is unlike the other ones, look at how meticulous and precise it would have had to be with all these stones and the filler or concrete, whatever they're using. I mean, the stones are the size of that book. Do you know what I mean? Like, and to think that this whole castle is made of stones almost this size, like some of them slightly bigger, maybe double, like maybe about as big as this. But most of the castles we've been at, they're made of, you know, huge giant slabs, which pose difficulty, you know, and, and um, you know, in creating it itself. But the fact that this whole castle is made out of such small stones like and just obviously thousands if not hundreds of thousands of them that's interesting and that's pretty cool another thing which i'm going to start doing is leaving little pieces of joel everywhere this is one of my business cards you meet me you're probably going to get one of these come ask for one of these i'm going to put one right up in this wall guys so what i can officially say and if anybody wants to come get it you can come get it Otherwise, I can say that I literally left a little piece of me in Cacher Philly Castle. There we go. I'm going to shove that in there further. But if anybody wants it, it's up on this wall. Second wall. Come get it. And otherwise, I'll have a piece of me here for years to come. So here we have another look of kind of the two wall setup. Outside wall, inside wall, and moat. We're going to get out into the outside wall area here. Um, so we saw pretty much everything in here. This is cool. This is right beside the leaning tower. They have some giant statue holding it, so they, they, they made it kind of, you know, cute and family friendly. Um, so yeah, that was cool. It was, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big castle. It's pretty monumentous. Again, small stones, pretty impressive. But let's go see kind of the outside of the grounds. And that's probably mostly about it. So once this is restored, this will look really, really nice. Obviously, one of the kind of what I'll call some of the main imagery, unfortunately, is being covered um, right now. And then normally they'll have a roof kind of observatory you can also get on, also not open right now. So I will say this, although this is kind of the you know, view of the main castle um, from, you know, like through both the walls, it would look a lot better and it has looked better and it will look better here soon. So. There you go, everybody. It's kind of the, the gist of it. Just without this. Let's see, do we got a picture on here? Here we go. That's that. So that 
should look like this. So like I said, I'm excited when that looks like this again. So now we are in between the first wall and second wall. There's the moat, the big castle. Here we have all their weapons. This is interesting. So we have a giant crossbow up here. Um, like giant, giant, giant crossbow. Which is pretty impressive. That would be a lot of crank and force behind that. We then have trebuchets. So these are kind of like catapults, I guess you could also essentially call them. Whereas there's a big like dongle counterweight thing. This would be pulled down, loaded with something heavy like those big stones we saw earlier, and then released to which it would then be thrown into hit a castle, a castle wall, or again, if it was, you know, like a stone, you want to hit the castle wall, probably if it was a dead body uh, of an animal or a human to spread disease, you'd want to get into the main keep or into the courtyard. So pretty crazy. These things are very large, very massive. Um, you know, these are not, you know, 700 years old, but they're supposed to be accurate depictions of them. And, uh, you know, the official, what they say, um, they also apparently have a mangonel, uh, which is this one here, which is more like a catapult, I guess they're also calling it. Uh, catapult like weapons based on the anger name, blah, blah, blah. We kick like one. Yeah, so it goes, wow, they date all the way back to the fourth century. That's crazy. But anyway, yeah, basically just, you know, this Mongol, this little Mongol thing, anything up to about 12 pounds, 100 meters, that's impressive. See, so yeah, that's that one there. So they twist rope again, 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 until basically it's top back, release, and thrown, versus, you know, the, the full on trebuchet. And this you can kind of see the outer wall, but look how thick that outer wall is. That is, this piece here alone is at, I'd say, six feet. Not to mention whatever else, uh, whatever else is on this, that, like that barrier part there. Not to mention all this, this is, I don't know, 15 feet across. I mean, this is a little bit of a, you know, just brought in a bit, but I mean, look at this wall. I mean, that must be legitimately minimum 15 feet across. Crazy. It's pretty cool. So they also, in the castle wall, actually had um, a mill, which was kind of in the wall slash under, under here, uh, which they could just, you know, get the uh, water right away and the flour delivered directly to the wall. So that's kind of cool. I mean, you know, the mill would be down here. And then we're leaving, but one more view from the outside. Like, it, you, it really cannot tell by the video just how large this thing is. It really is massive. Like, land mass wise, it is just giant. It's maybe not like the tallest of the tall, but spread out, it is definitely huge i see why it's the largest you know what i mean so super cool though guys cacher philly castle i'm glad they're open here on the bank holiday and then here we have cacher philly which i don't think we're gonna go see much of the town pretty much that was all the time we had um it was it took us uh like about an hour it was about an hour and a half a good hour and a half hour 40 minutes just to see that and admittingly we went pretty quick but we did get to see kind of everything but pretty dang impressive. Wales, you've been a blast.